This short video is going to answer a question from one of my faithful students on page 24, number 10. This is from section 1.3 on properties of graphs of functions. The question tells you that you have a quadratic that has uh, the following properties. So it decreases from negative infinity to 2. So here it is decreasing to 2 which of course has to be the axis of symmetry because this is where it's going to turn around and increase from 2 to infinity. So there's my graph. Um, for simplicity purpose, I put the vertex at 2 and 0. Now on the y-axis, we have the y-intercept of 4, so 0, 4. And then you would just go back to your equation for a quadratic in vertex form that you learned in grade 10. So I plug in my values to see what the a value would be. Remember that? Finding the a value. So I have x is 0, h is 2, squared plus k, which is 0. So I get 4 is equal to 4a. So that means a is equal to 1. So a possible equation for this function then would simply be y equals x minus 2 squared. Now the question also says, is this the only equation for the function? And you should be able to see from looking at this that, no, I could draw other parabolas. I could have one that goes like this, right? It still is following all of the characteristics. It's decreasing to here, and then it's increasing. Or I could have another one that goes down here somewhere. So there's many different possibilities. Oh, not that one, I'm sorry. It didn't go through 0, 4. But this one, lots of them could go through 0 and 4. And I could make it more steep. So it goes through like this. Still going to go through here and back up again. Ignore that one. I wasn't thinking clearly. Okay, so you have all kinds of different equations. And it says, is there only one function that has the characteristics given in part A? And your answer would be no. There could be a number of different ones with different um, A values, right? So different compressions or stretches with the same uh, y-intercept. Now, if you were asked to give another equation, could you do that? Well, sure, you could say, okay, what if the vertex was at, um, let's say right here, let's say it was two and two. So if the vertex was two, two, how does that change my equation? So I would still write out y equals ax minus h squared plus k, and I still have x is equal to 0, y equals 4. That's my y-intercept, but this time my h and k are going to be 2 and 2. So if you plug those in now, you'd have 4 is equal to a times x is 0 minus 2, so 0 minus 2 squared plus k, which is 2. So I would have 4 is equal to 4a plus 2. I have to bring 2 to the other side of the equation. 2 is equal to 4a, and a is equal to, make sure you divide the right way here. So many people mix this up. So a is equal to 1 half. So then I would have y is equal to 1 half x minus 2 squared plus 2. That would also be another equation. So if you check, you plug in x is 0, you would have 4 divided by 2 is 2 plus 2 is 4, and that gives us back to the x and y values. The final part of the question says if x is an absolute value function and has the characteristics in part a, is there only one such function? And the answer is no, of course not. It's the same, same situation as above. If I have... Um, an absolute value function, it just means it has a little different shape, right? So we would have a function that goes through 0 and 4 again, goes like this. And as you can see, I could also do this as well. So lots of different possibilities. Um, for instance, we could have f at x equals the absolute value of x. Now remember, we shifted it to the right. Two, so it would have to be x minus 2. We could have that one. Or we could have something like 2x minus 2. 
and you can see that if I plugged in 0 here, the absolute value of minus 2 is 2, and 2 plus 2 is 4, that would still give me my y-intercept. And if I put in 0 here, 0 minus 2, the absolute value of minus 2 is 2 times 2 is 4, and so yes, there are more than one possibility. There are more, there is more than one possibility. Okay, hope that helped you out. Sid, all the best.